far as safe. Go on, come see. I want to talk about some stuff. I'll see. Yeah. All right. I'm going to talk about it. I have to protect the blind side. Okay, do you guys want to talk about all this stuff first, or do you want to get into the, 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 the important stuff? Let's talk about your stuff first to make sure we get it right. And uh, you guys want to talk a little bit about failure and what you've witnessed over a lot of startups. You have a very statistically relevant number of startups now. Talk about trends you've seen and how to avoid it. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, so what I did this past summer for about a month is I took, I looked at 10 companies, around 8 to 10 companies. Um, that didn't have the outcome that they were looking for uh, and just looked at all the data, every single email that we wrote, every single, all the information that we had at the time we made the investment and thought about how can we make our process better. Um, and so so you that, looked at it, knowing something failed, you looked at eight failed companies and then you went back at the original data and said, how could we have seen this from the beginning? Right. Okay. Or what could we have done better and how can we use that to all right. Process. And what did you find out? So, um, first of all, you know, when we invest, we focus on founders, and that's you know, we focus on founders over the idea. And one of the things um, that was pretty telling was that, um, and I learned this from Raw on day one, is that founder dynamics really matter. And I think trying to predict in the diligence phase how these founders are going to gel when things aren't going their way. What were the eight companies that failed? I mean, if they failed, so you can mention. Well, they, they asked not to be. Right. Yeah. So, suffice to say, I looked at these companies. Wait, so we can say a couple of them just so we have an idea of what we're talking about? Well, I, they, they prefer not to be mentioned. So. But they failed, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, why wouldn't they be joyous at the opportunity to share their failure to <laughs> let other people not fail in the future? Why don't we just name one? Just start with one. Well, thing. let me. I'll just focus on the. We didn't work out this plan. Yeah. My previous startup batch and daily youth. But you were one of the eight. Somewhat, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've talked to David. I don't know if I was one of those eight, but we've talked about it enough. Okay. He's, I'm sure, it was part of the. Yeah. It was a pretty list. random selection. Right. I just. And so, um, but these these dynamics really matter. It's, you know, sometimes it could be, um, you know, how do they work together? Ron has always talked about the chemistry in their meeting. I think that's super. Um, and on the flip side, sometimes the chemistry can be too good, where the founders have very similar skill sets, and the thinking it almost becomes too alike. Um, so that, that really helps you know, if you're looking at a new startup? It, it does, because it, for, it forces me, at least, to ask more probing questions. Okay. And just get there. You know, there's, no, there's no exact science to it. What, what is your failure rate? Our failure rate? Like, for every hundred companies you invest in, how many outright fail? 30%? Well, it depends. I mean, in terms of the, the companies that either fail or give money back, probably 50 to 60%. And if it's not even giving the money back? Probably 30%. Okay. And you still make good money with a 30% failure rate, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that's most most venture capitalists and angel investors, that's the profile. Yeah. Okay. I think our failure rate is actually a little lower because we've been doing it since 1994. We have repeat entrepreneurs who end up typically being more successful. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. We've talked about that before on stage, about how the repeat entrepreneurs are twice as likely or something to not fail as the first-time entrepreneurs. Is that right? Yeah. There's some data there, yeah. And then there's some where, and that's another thing that you learn, is that some of these founders that are repeat entrepreneurs who either exited very quickly, you have to think, have they learned the lessons from the yeah. first time entrepreneur. So the takeaway on this first point is just just continue to ask really probing questions and be a better listener sure. for those ideas. What else? You've got down here effective party rounds. Talk about that a little bit. So and, and what and tell us what a party So party round is when you have like ten investors who put in two hundred thousand, let's say, and as opposed to maybe one investor who puts in six hundred thousand and, and other angels. And the quote unquote risk of that is you have this bystander effect where the founder asks for help, everybody else thinks the other person is helping, and nobody helps. And so the data is a little inconclusive here because there are some companies that have raised part of these party rounds and have gone on to do well. Yeah. Um, and there were some that was pretty clear when they asked for the basic help, nobody answered. And so the takeaway for me or for us was 
you have to think about these founders and are they self-aware enough to think about their sort of known unknowns? Like what are their biggest risks? You can't anticipate all the risks, but if you're a consumer internet company and you're not great at user acquisition, who's going to help you with that? Um, or if you're really good at it. Maybe but, so you're saying party rounds can be bad if people aren't realistic about what they can It's very fact specific, yeah. And that's where you have to ask the questions and figure out for the founder, are they being self-aware enough to think about what they need? To realize that if they have 10 investors who would only put in a little bit, that they can't really expect that much help from each investor. Exactly. Yeah. And for some founders, that's what they want, and they're repeat founders, and that is the value add to them. Okay. Brian, do you have anything to say at all, or are you just like the, the pretty guy up here on stage? <laughs> I do. What, uh, I think this is. And let me ask this. So you joined SD, and we talked about this like in May. Yeah. And then, so who's running the show? Because one of the things you guys said is important is. is there is a clear leader, and I don't see a clear leader anymore, right? Is it sort of like you guys are jostling for a position, and one of you is going to go? Who's the leader? No, I think we're a partnership. Yeah, yeah. David's the leader. Okay. Partnership. Okay. David is the managing director. And what is Brian? He's the assistant managing director? He's the, he's the managing director as well. Oh, he's yeah. the, okay. Is anyone not the managing director? <laughs> the truth is, you guys have all known each other for 10 years, so yeah. you get along pretty well. So, yeah. okay. Do you have anything to add? Yes. Uh, I think David, David looked at a lot of data and feedback. Yeah. I tend to, at least within certain realms of apps, like social media apps, which some people we talked about last time said it was dead. Yeah. You can look at Snapchat success, new companies like Frontback. You can apply a lot of these thoughts to them, but at the same time, you have to just look at each independently, or there's a gut feel on them. And I think it's a combination, and that's what the partnership is. David can look at some of these facts. I tend to look a lot at the product, as well as the founding team. Yeah. Um, and there's always a handful of characteristics within the product that work. Is it simple? Can it be used waiting in line at the grocery store? Can it carve out behavior from Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook? Yeah. Does it create a new media format? Yeah. Is it a tweet, a blog post, a square picture with filters? Is it? Is it any of these things? You're your eyes are blazing open. It's just like, you call me to talk about this when you ask me about deals. Oh, and I said, no, okay, you brought this up, so I'll finish it. So okay. I call him, hey, we're looking at this deal, looks like the founders are pretty cool, they're smart, we're in. And, and then you, you go away for a minute, you come back, and then whatever your answer is, and I swear, yes. whether, let's talk about Snapchat, for example, you're an investor. You can come back, and if you decided not to invest, or couldn't get into the round, you can come back with a 15 minute explanation, in depth discussion, very smart, about why Snapchat will never make it. If you do get in, I just agree. Have, and I, and at any point, you can have a yes or no discussion, and I, and I just like admit it. You go with your gut, and then you fill in the bullshit later. No, it's <laughs> the gut instinct is led by these facts of what the product looks like, how it feels when you use it, other people's reactions to it early on. Vine felt good instantly. Snapchat's unique. Front back is unique. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when, I, when we have a startup. Like there's a startup we both invested in. I brought to you. I spoke to the team I after the discussion. Which means like, oh, the social network dynamics are not here in the same way they were with Instagram. And that's when I cut you off. I said, This is just, do you believe this bullshit? Like, you're going to, like, I, I don't know what you're saying anymore. So I truly believe you just, it's like it sounds really interesting when you to, sorry, I'm going on and on. Go on. Yeah, no. I but do I'm right. Even right. No, I think the biggest gating factor is when you, when you speak to the team, which I, I had it at that point, yeah. and you hear their vision, and you look at the product further, that's the most important thing. All right. Well, this is awesome data. And you think it helps you with making current decisions? I think it does. I mean, it's a very limited sample set, um, but we went pretty deep into the data. We literally looked at every single email. We looked at the, you know, what was written at the time we, we made the investment. Yeah. Um, and we just said, hey, what can we do better? Um, there, there's one other point, and this sort of weeds into what Brian was talking about. One thing that we saw was that for these companies that raise, let's say, a million dollars for 18 months of runway, um, some companies that try to do two things in that 18 months, that's, that's a recipe for Do that. one thing, you're saying. Yeah, so for example, um, or raise more money. So a good example is a company like Parse. Or like they had to get build a developer ecosystem and also get developers onto their platform. Those are really hard things. So and do one would, thing unless you do two things. And if you do two things that are really yeah. challenging, do both raise well. more money. Okay. Yeah. If you 
you're going to do two things in parallel. You see what I'm saying? It's all bullshit, right? It's like, <laughs> it's like do one thing unless you do two things. They can do no, it depends, depends on the type of company. Exactly. And it's, it's a consumer facing product or developer product. platform. You can't, it's not a one thing. I don't know. I used to buy into this bullshit, but I've been a VC now for a couple of years and it's all bullshit. I've seen it. And I've been in the, back, the behind the scenes meetings with you guys and it's like, that guy's a dick. There's no way we're going to invest in him. Right? In fact, who was that guy you were talking about? Yeah. <laughs> How many of like the, yep. <laughs> the, the purchase, the purpose of the project that we did last summer was so that we would go do a deep dive in these failed companies so that we yeah. could give new entrepreneurs better advice. And now that Coach is back, Coach went through this experience. And so now we have someone who just went through it we do more research, we can give better advice to entrepreneurs now. We've always been proactive about tapping an entrepreneur on the shoulder and saying, yeah. do you realize it's not working? And do you know what a soft landing is? Yeah. And if you agree, we will help execute that. Yeah. And, and, and we do that many, many times with our 30% that fail. But if you have a soft landing and you get the team to be part of a bigger team, you sell your company to Facebook, yeah. Twitter. That's a soft landing. That we define that at SV Angel as a success. Because you found a place for the team and for your software to yeah. continue to be fulfilled. Yeah. Okay. That's important. Okay, so is this, do you feel like you said what you needed to say? Anything else you want to add? <laughs> okay, so we love founders. Yeah. And it is, you're right, this is very limited. It's just, it helps us to think about, you know, going forward, how we make decisions. We don't look at this and say, hey, this is, you know, this is the gospel, because everything, yeah. all of this is so fast. So and look, we, we have a responsibility yeah. to give good advice. I'd yeah. say it's more art than science. It's not, you claim it's all BS, it's not BS. Right. I've, I've been working with Ron for 10 years. You, you see things after a while. I'm, okay, I'm with you. That's and, what I, and I give you guys all kinds of shit. I call it complete bullshit because I do think a lot of what you do talk about is complete bullshit. But that's what we're talking to you. But yeah. even, even, I mean, we still say that the, you know, the most important early stage investor to get, it, you know, is SV Angel. It, we include ourselves in that. We like to work with you. We always try to get you guys into our deals because of the huge amount of value you add. Where you're not just bullshitting, bullshitting, bullshitting. It's like you really do help companies. So it's awesome. Can I now start talking about some other stuff? Sure. Or is there, okay. Ron, a year ago with the Sandy Hook tragedy, you started this nebulous anti-gun platform. Have you accomplished a single thing with this? Well, it's not quite a year. It was December 14th. Yeah. Uh, but has yeah. there been any laws passed? Any guns taken off the street? Any anything that has been uh, successful? There's been a lot of gun buybacks. Yeah, which which is awesome because we're getting guns off the street. Um, but I got, uh, I had an epiphany on September 14th, the day of the Sandy Hook uh, massacre, when Gabby Giffords happened to be a guest at my holiday party, because Gabby Giffords, the congresswoman who was gunned down in Arizona, happened to be a guest in my home the same day that Sandy Hook happened. And I'm into karma, I guess. But as, as we quieted the group down, uh, and, and we recognized Sandy Hook and Gabby Giffords, I said, hey, the tech community needs to get involved in this issue of gun safety. Yep. Now, the U.S. Congress uh, had a proposal for background checks that was, every poll said 90% of Americans agreed there should be background checks, and the U.S. Congress ignored that. The Senate actually voted it down. So, well, you have, there's a big disconnect there. You have Bill of Rights issues, and I understand this is a long battle, but... For We're not interested in taking anyone's arms away. All right. Background checks. What about blind people? Do you see in Iowa there are a lot of blind people to get carry permits now? Do I like to take their guns away? How about, how about that? I think blind people, I love them, but I don't think they should be driving cars or firing guns, personally. I, we agree. But let me ask this. You put a huge machine to work. And you had senators following you around. I've been to some of the events. And, and you know, it's a long haul, but you put a huge machine to work to fight this issue. 
Then we see what happened with the NSA. We see that the NSA is strong arming these companies that are part of our ecosystem to give them data, or the companies are handing it over on their own. They're forcing the, the, uh, the telephone companies to give all this data. They're grabbing encrypted data off the backbone and decrypting it. They're subverting encryption standards. They've hacked the operating systems on mobile phones, it looks like. They have presentations that call us zombies and sheep and mock us, saying that like, if only you know, Orwell knew what he, they could pull off now. Why have you sat by for six months and not done a single thing to stop this? I mean, this is our community. This is like the human rights of the entire world and us as Americans, our Bill of Rights. You haven't done anything, not one thing. Well, uh, I absolutely agree that we have to balance national security. There was this thing called 9-11. The government's responsibility is to protect the country. But, but then you have, you have to balance that with transparency. And I think now there is a debate that's starting about that. And, and I completely agree with that. Are you okay if the government stores every bit of your online data as long as they're transparent about it? Or do you feel as though you're... It, it depends on right being... For me, personally, it would depend on how they digest the data and uh, how long they keep the data. Uh, but for, for my involvement, uh, I've picked three issues in the last year. Um, gun safety, immigration. I spend at least an hour a day right now working on, the, on immigration reform that's in the House of Representatives now, and we hope it passes by the end of the year. What's the third? We have a lot of work to do. The third issue is civic engagement. Okay. What we've done with SF City to get the tech community involved locally in their community. And look, and now, I'm just one human being. No, but I can't. Why? I can't find the government? five other issues. But now, is it because if this is an issue that you're passionate about? Is it you because should be the Ron Conway uh, of the N <laughs> of the NSA issue? It, you should like I'm. I'm speaking out, but I don't have the ability to put together a political machinery. Are you kidding? Even our lawyer just said he's trying to avoid putting too much personal city data online. And you're saying that you're basically comfortable with the government doing whatever they want. And I have to ask No, no, no. no. I, I'm saying it depends on how they digest my data. Do you trust any government authority to do the right thing when it comes to power? Well, obviously, the, event, the events of the last 60 days with the NSA says that there, there has to be a balance between national security and transparency. And I think there is a healthy debate going on about it. If, if you know, I'm probably not gonna be the tech leader who's the head of that, because I'd be misleading people, because I'm spending between now and the end of the year working on immigration reform with 4.us, with the awesome founder group in 4.us. I can't sit here and say, okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with the NSA issue. And also, I'm not a bullshitter. I'm not going to tell people that I'm going to go lead the charge on that when I personally don't have the bandwidth. When right now, immigration reform to me is more important. But we know nothing's going to happen with immigration reform this year, I, probably next year. I hope you're wrong. Why do I hope and any wrong. senator or congressman who's listening, he's not, he's not representing uh, the effort that's going to take place in the next few months. Yeah, I, I, I. Hey, hey, we, we have to think positive about no, those problems. You don't think At the end of the year, if the U.S. Congress hasn't passed immigration. I don't know. We're not talking about immigration. We're talking about the end of civilization. We're talking about a basic human right to have some level of privacy in your life. And, and honestly, it doesn't seem to bother you to think that the government is collecting everything you do and at will can go and look at it. What if they decide that people who are against gun control, I'm sorry, that people that are pro-gun control like you are, what if in five years they decide that those people are basically communists in the 50s? And then they go after you. They, I mean, do you, are you afraid at all of future governments having all this data about that? Of course you do. Of course I am. Yeah, of course I am. That's so, why there's a national debate going on about this issue. you I, could stand up, and you could actually make a big difference on this issue if you were to do that. Uh, uh, of course I could. But I only have so many hours in a day, and guess what? I have a day job called SV Angel, where I do spend 70% of my day helping entrepreneurs. Okay. Uh, well, hey, I, 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 
I, I agree there should be a debate about this. I, I think you sound like the perfect leader. No. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll fall in place. About this. I'll fall in place. About this, right? so, I mean, I want government to be brought down on this. I'm not the guy to figure out a compromise over this stuff. But we can talk about that more in every other single discussion I have with anyone on the stage over the next three days. So. Well, ho hopefully in the next three days you'll find a tech leader. I thought I found one. I honestly, Mon, I thought you were going to come up here and say, I'm not going to stand for this anymore because history will not look kindly on those that did. Not when I'm spending seven hours a day helping entrepreneurs and another couple hours a day working on immigration reform. You, you gotta you gotta pick your issues. Yeah. And right now immigration reform for me is the most important. All right. And I'm hoping we can get it passed. And and that's why I have to be focused on that. You know, there are a lot of congressmen saying, hey it'd be great if Conway went to the NSA issue, because then he won't bug us about immigration. Uh, I'm I'm on the immigration train. I can't get off in the last, when we're pulling up to the, to the end of the station. Guys, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank Mike. Pleasure.